Hello again. Last week I made a blank desktop background with Paisley design on it and this week we are making a desktop calendar. To download last week so that you don't have to start from scratch you can get that from 8wordmission.blogspot.com Just look for 19th of March 2010 that's when the post was. This week we are going to continue finishing off the desktop. I'm using Zara Extreme Pro version 5 which is my favorite graphics software. File, import, and import the file onto the workspace. Then I'm going to file, import, and I'm going to find some things to bring onto the desktop to make the calendar. I'll bring the manila cut out, and it has a skewed shadow on it. I think that would be quite nice to sit on top of the whole calendar. The next thing I would like to get is the crumpled piece of paper which has lines on it. It's not very crumpled but I think it would make quite a good backdrop to put the actual calendar on. So I'll just import that, file import. Now I'd like the manila bird cutout to be always on the front because it's got the lovely shadow. So I'm just going to arrange and bring to front. Now I'm putting everything onto the right hand side of the desktop calendar because some people have their icons on the desktop and the icons are normally positioned on the left so this way they can still have their icons on the desktop and also still see what day it is. I'd like to bring in the torn paper tab which has the shadows which make it look like the corners are, are curled up but I'm going to actually bring it in separately and the reason I'm doing that is because I, I think the shadow is a wee bit dark and I would like to make that more transparent so that's why I'm bringing them in separately. So I'll just put the shadow to the back by going to arrange put to back then I can get a clearer idea of what it will look like and I'm just clicking on the transparency tool which resembles a wine glass and when I select that I can decide how transparent I want to make it. Once I've selected the transparency tool there is a slider at the top of the workspace which I can move along to get the desired transparency. Very easy. So now I'm just reducing that in size by selecting it and grabbing the corner and dragging it down and I'm just double clicking on it which will give me the corner handles so now I can turn it and put it in position. I just want it to be on the edge there and, and that's what I'm going to write April on. Now I'm just zooming out so that I can have a look at the whole drawing. I still want the manila bird to be in front so I'm just going to play around with that, bring that to the front and then move it where I want it to be. And now it's time to type out the word April I'm just going to type out the word April. I'm just using Arial. Now I'm just going to zoom in on this so I can see it up close. And then I will select it and then I will make sure the T, which stands for the text tool, is selected. And then I'm going to select the font that I would like, which is Jules We Heart. And it's available from artmama.co.nz. Just do a search for Jules We Heart. I'm just going to select the word April and I'm going to double click it and click on the corner handles and turn it around so that I can put it over there on the tab which is where I'd like it to be. Okay so I'm just going to play around with the size so I'm getting it how I'd like it to be. Now I'm going to zoom into the crumpled piece of paper which is where I'm going to put all the dates and details which normally go on a calendar. I need to make sure that the T tool is selected which is the text tool and I'm going to type out the initials of the days of the week Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday just the initials will be fine everybody knows what they stand for if they speak English and I'm just selecting them and I'm going to change them to Jules Wee Heart again which is as I said before the font that I'm choosing to use. Now I'm just playing around with it. I'm not very happy with the size so I can enlarge the letters or I can push them over or enlarge the piece of paper or move that over. If I make the letters bold 
that will help distinguish it but of course I'm not making them bold what I'm doing is I'm changing the outline from 0.5 points I'll just try it at, oh, I think it's on none so I'll put it on 0.5 or point or one point and that will change the boldness of the font so now I'm just going to type the letters what I'd like to do so that they're all lined up is type them out one on top of each other so for example the first day of April is on a Thursday so I just type the one and then I click enter and then I type 8 enter 15 enter 22 enter 29 and then I need to center them because I like my numbers to be centered sometimes in calendars they're centered and sometimes they're right aligned but the, for these calendars I'll just have them centered I'll just zoom out to see how the drawing looks Maybe I need to get rid of that tab. Maybe the tab's in the way. I don't know. I'll just I'll just think about that. I can move the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I'm actually just putting a space in between them, just a space by space, and that makes it a bit easier. And now I can select the whole thing and move that to where I'd like it to go. I'm still adjusting the size here and playing around with it. So now I'm doing the next column of letters and what I find easiest to do so that I have the right spacing is just to copy it and then to paste it on top exactly of the other one and then I just move the arrow key, I'm just moving it five times and that will get it to the right position under the letter and then I know that the numbers are always the exact same distance from each other. There's probably an easier way to do it but this is the way that I like to do it. So once I've moved the column of letters along, I can then just select the text tool and type the new numbers. And then I can copy and paste in place and move those along. Five spaces. So I just repeat that process until I've got all of the numbers that I need for the month of April typed out and correctly spaced. After that, I can group them all together. That way I can move them around and resize them or whatever without worrying about the spacing being disturbed. On a lot of English calendars that I've seen, Sundays are often in red. So I'm just selecting Sundays and I'm selecting the red colour. For the actual letter S, it's a wee bit more complicated. I've increased the line width on the days of the week so that's why I need to right click on the red diamond and make it set line color. So I'll just group these together and play with the positioning and the next step is to export it. I'm exporting it as 1920 pixels by 1200 pixels saving it into this folder and I'll put it on the blog 8wordmission.blogspot.com if you would like it you're very welcome to it. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.